Hello? Hi, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. The Wi-Fi works fine. And when I'm in my apartment, it's fine. And it doesn't work at all. It's so. fine. We're here. So how are you? Oh. I am uh, I'm very good. I'm, I'm very excited about this. So thank you. Thank you well, for we're, having me. we're very excited as well. I'm just coming in from like a dark shadow in the middle of nowhere appearing. But uh, yeah, no. So um, I think I just want to start off for those who are watching. We could just first start by talking a little bit about your background in activism and what's gotten you excited. And we can talk about the critical upcoming 2020 election. We can talk about, uh, you know, how our app is motivating folks to get out there. And maybe people will even be popping in questions, who knows, in the in the comments. But uh, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, that sounds that sounds nice and easy. And then and then I'm going to ask you some questions. OK, because um, I'm sure a lot of people want to know uh, more about this app and, and the whole program. And, you know, I'm very intrigued um, by what you guys are doing. So um, I'd love for everybody to hear about it as well. Um, so just, you know, a lot of people have sort of heard my story, but, um, you know, it's it's sort of started in um, I first started paying attention to what was going on um, with the planet in 2012. Um, my family and I, we lost uh, pretty much everything uh, from Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. We lost our house. We Our neighborhood was destroyed. Um, we live right next to the beach. So um, all of the coastal towns were, were pretty much demolished. Um, so that was sort of my first taste of what, you know, climate change is and, and what a natural disaster is. And, um, you know, when, when you literally get to see it face to face and when you are literally in it the way, you know, my family was, I literally drove through it trying to find a way to rescue my parents. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, but they were, they were rescued a day later, which was oh probably God. the most, the scariest thing that ever happened to me. Um, so that was sort of my first taste of it. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't until 2016, I saw Leo's documentary um, on Nat Geo. Um, <laughs> and uh, that really, that really changed everything for me. Um, because, you know, he's, he's one of my favorite actors. And I did not know personally that he dedicates his whole life to um, fighting for climate justice and, and the planet and, and the oceans and all the animals. And, and it was just amazing to see someone at that sort of level of fame and power um, dedicate everything since he was pretty much 21 years old um, yeah. to climate change and the climate crisis. And, you know, everything that he talked about in the documentary, um, I'm going to write it here so everyone could. Yeah. Uh, it's called Before the Flood. Um, Nat Geo. Uh, and, you know, everything he was talking about, he had sit down conversations with Al Gore, with um, President Obama, with um, Elon Musk, uh, tons of scientists, a lot of climate scientists, and everything they talked about that was going to happen is happening. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's happening a little quicker than scientists predicted. Um, so, it, you know, it, it that woke me up completely. And that was sort of my the moment I think in my career where I knew exactly why I wanted to do what I do and um, why I wanted to reach people and, and, and try to help people and try to raise awareness because not only have I seen it personally, um, you see it happening all over the world. You see it happening in America. We were literally just hit with a couple of hurricanes in, in a matter of two months. We're, we're, we're still, uh, experiencing wildfires all over the West Coast. Um, yeah. uh, so, it, you know, it's just, it's it seems like this is something that we're going to have to be dealing with for a little while unless we change things, you know? And, and that's sort of, I think that's a good segue to why this election is so important because I think for the first time ever, um, climate change is a top priority on the ballot. And we have one guy that, um, doesn't want to give in to any facts from scientists um, because of personal agenda and because of his investors and, and the money. people that um, the people that are funding his uh, campaign are in, you know they're involved with coal and oil and 
you know, if if uh, if Trump would all of a sudden be like, well, climate change is real, we need to go green, he'd lose all of his supporters. And um, there's a weird thing happening uh, amongst his supporters and the right wing where they think climate change is a hoax and they think um, everything happening is natural and or, or they say it happens every hundred years and a lot of a lot of uh, ridiculous stuff like that. Um, but then we have a, a guy who happens to believe in science and is making climate change his top priority and and his VP believes in science and um, and Barack Obama when he was president he's done if not the most for this country when it comes to climate bills and advancing um, our fight against the climate crisis and then 45 came in and then reversed everything so yeah we're sort of taking five steps back to get back to one step forward um, but I do believe that we can get there especially because there is such a a pressure and a responsibility to make it a priority. Um, you know, because the thing about climate change, I think that people sometimes don't realize is it affects every single person. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter um, what race you are, what gender you are, um, what your beliefs are. Uh, climate change is relentless and it uh, hits all over the world. It doesn't just hit certain areas. It's, um, uh, it's, it's scary. And um, the planet is, um, you know, she's relentless. She doesn't really yeah. care. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's mankind's fault. So um, it's, it's our duty to reverse the damage that we created because we have the power to reverse it. Um, and if we don't, we're sort of screwed, uh, to, be, to put it in simple terms. Um, so that's why, you know, I've been going so hard, you can say, um, because you know, we finally have an opportunity to uh, provide solutions. And as you know, we've spoken about this before. It's my, my whole thing is how do you provide solutions for people? You know, we right. need, exactly. I think if you don't provide solutions and some sort of sense of hope to people, um, it's, it's a very, it could become a very dark road to follow. Uh, and, you know, I think people are looking for ways to help and people are looking for solutions to make the world a better place. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why when you guys reached out, I was a hundred percent in because your app covers all the bases, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just voting or, um, or equality or the planet. It literally is any sort of activism that you're interested in. Um, you know, obviously my, my priorities are the ocean, the planet, black lives matter. Um, and the fact that we're able to, spread all of those issues on your app um it's it's really a, a beautiful you know it's it's something that i wish i had when i was younger mm. um uh because you know you sort of at least at least when i was younger it wasn't that long ago but you know it was <laughs> still like five years ago and you know hurricane sandy was eight years ago and we, we didn't have anything like that like even mm. close you know you you had to do your research or you had to watch a documentary or you had to read a book um, and now we have the um, the uh, the the luxury of an app. You know, literally in the palm of our hands, uh, we can learn about any social issue, and, and we can figure out ways to help. Um, so I just want to say thank you for doing that and um, for getting involved. And you know, you guys are obviously a bunch of young people doing this, so that's really reassuring to know that there are young people that care. Um, and uh, I believe that the youth has the largest demographic in this year's vote that's right um and i think it's something like 17 million people turned 18 this year um and in 2016 over 100 million people didn't vote so you could uh, almost predict what could have happened if they did vote um so uh yeah it's just what you guys are doing is really it's um it's refreshing and, and reassuring and it makes me confident in the in the fight that i've been fighting and it's nice to know that there's a bunch of allies everywhere um, from all parts of the world and uh, for people younger than me, my age, older. Um, so thank you for that. And I, I would love for the people, um, I, I see that we got a good amount of people. I'd love for the people to know exactly what you guys are doing and why you're doing it, how, how you got started um, and then how people could help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for that really inspiring story, but also one that I think needs to drive change. You know, you hear the words that you're speaking about how we have the opportunity to save the climate, uh, to save, yeah. you know, animals, to save 
the ocean um, and we need to act on that and how yeah. intersectional the movement is between racial exactly. justice, social justice, economic and climate justice and everything comes together. And I really appreciate the words around our platform being a, a nexus. I think that's exactly it, you know, where we're able to bring people together who are interested to get involved in, in any issue in, in the movement and find out exactly how they can make a change because really every person can make a difference. And, you know, exactly. you're someone that's certainly using your platform and, and just doing yourself the kinds of actions, you know, whether it's just as, you know, quote unquote, simple as voting, which, of course, voting isn't obviously simple, but, um, it, you know, that's that's one step. But we could even go further to taking action, to going to events, to there's a climate strike happening tomorrow, um, you know, yep. obviously. So there's so many different levels and we really want to engage people wherever they're at and then move them up, turn them up, turn up their activism. So, um yeah, let me tell you a little bit about how we got started. And, and I appreciate those kind words, which really, I think, should be directed at our whole team. And I was thinking earlier, this is one of the first IG lives that I've done. I'm not actually on social media other than okay. turn up. And I was like, can you actually put more than one person in the turn up account? And it, you can't. So it's mm -hmm. me, hopefully in the future, okay. <laughs> other people. Um, but uh, so, no. So basically, the problem is, and, and I can sort of tell you this, there are more than 10 million young people who actually want to get involved in social justice, if you look at the statistics. And that's a very low amount. But what we found is that they don't know how. That's really the yes. problem. So TurnUp is really a niche social network for activism, enabling people to get involved in events, access resources, join communities, and meet the people and organizations that, need, that they need in order to create action and, and to develop change. So um, I actually started organizing when I was in fourth grade. And wow. what I noticed was, I guess this was about 2010 or so, because um, I'm 18 now. And what happened was, uh, you know, and I, you, you uh, I guess you didn't grow up in the United States originally, right? Or you were... I, I, I grew up in New York from age of five. Okay, from yeah. five. Okay, so then you yeah. definitely, everybody would complain at my school about the school lunch. So they'd say, oh, this food is terrible. You know, why are yeah. they eating this? Same here. It was awful. Yeah. So, yes. but nobody was doing anything about it. And so I petitioned for a salad bar to be added to our school. So that, <laughs> yeah, so that those who wanted to would have equal access to healthy food. Um, mm -hmm. Because really, you know, 70% of the people at my school were on free or reduced lunch. So they actually didn't have the opportunity to bring lunch from home. Now there's one at every school in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is where I live. So wow. I really saw the power of youth organizing because it was we had hundreds of young people who were signing our petition and were, you know, not just young people, teachers and uh, faculty, you know, administrators. So, but, you know, then really got inspired, you know, as I'm sure you saw when millions of people were engaging after Parkland, right? And, but th there were so many problems that, that were happening where, you know, TikTok, Snapchat and Instagram, which is what we're using, obviously, they weren't purpose built for organizing. So people knew what was going on nationally, but nobody knew what was happening in their own community, the organizations mm. that they could join. Uh, I, I live in Cambridge, as I said, so in Boston, just across the river, you know, we actually didn't know what the activists were that were involved. We didn't know how to get in touch with them. And, um, but, but yet every organization had their own list of events and has their own page. So we really thought that if we could just have one place to go, like you were talking about, where you can actually engage with organizations, where you can engage with um, activists and where you can take action on those issues, it really removes a barrier to, to entry in organizing because it's really exciting when somebody wants to get involved. But if the problem is that they don't know how, that really should be eliminated because the motivation is there. Um, exactly. And, you know, long term, our goal is to engage new people, new voters, new activists, because we have an easy way for them to do it by just going to the app store, you know, looking at turn up activism and then they can see all the events in their community, they can add events, they can add, um, you know, posts and petitions, and really find ways to take action. And it's a big community within our organization. As you can probably see, we have lots and lots of young people um, that are engaging with us as volunteers, as interns. Um, and, and we're on many college campuses now, uh, trying to spread the word. But um, yeah, I'd say that, that that's where we're at. And that's a little bit about my background, but it's 100% about engaging more young people in, in politics, in activism, and most importantly, you know, elections, because as you had mentioned, this is the most critical election, I think, 
perhaps ever in in American history. Um, so yeah. uh, one of the most, and certainly the most in the last you know recent years. So everything is on the ballot, and I, I sort of like to say social justice is on the ballot. But you can say oh, of you know, climate is on the ballot, and you know racial justice is on the ballot, and I think the last week has been very depressing. I mean, and you know w whether it's the death of Justice Ginsburg or what's going on in Louisville, um, it's you know how can we find ways to actually do something about it? And that's what we're trying to offer people. Yeah, it um, it sort of seems like the, whichever direction you turn, something bad happens. Um, and it's, <laughs> you know, it takes it takes a lot of energy and, and um, a lot of courage to somehow keep fighting and keep moving forward, you know, and I find myself sometimes, you know, really down and you know, sometimes I'm sure like a lot of people, you just want to throw in the towel, but you can't because um, throwing in the towel doesn't do anything. And, you know, I, I really like yesterday, what happened with Breonna Taylor, I I almost didn't know what to say. Um, and, you know, it, it, it took a lot for me to, again, sort of focus on how this has to be our fuel to continue mm -hmm. fighting. And... Um, you know, I was pissed. I'm still pissed. I think everybody's extremely pissed. And, uh, um, it's sort of taking that energy that you're feeling uh, and turning that emotion into somehow turning it into fuel. Um, because, you know, it, it, there's there's two things that we could do. You know, we could, we could lash out in anger or we could use that energy and continue moving forward and focusing on solutions and focusing on getting people out that don't care about fair systems. There's, there's not a fair system in policing. There's not a fair system in the justice system. Um, there's obviously not a fair system in the White House. So, you know, the, the fact that all these massive groups of power are showing their true colors, um, I think we have the greatest opportunity to take them out, you know, and put in people of power that care about people, care about America as a whole, not one side or one, you know, one demographic or one, um, uh, one group of, you know, or the 1%, um, right. which is something that's been happening for the last four years. Uh, so it's, um, you know, it's tough. And, and it's, again, it's amazing to see young people stepping up, you know, and I, I think that's, I think that's something we've been asking for for a little while now. And, you know, I think Greta really kicked it off with sort of being the voice and the face yeah. of climate justice. Um, you know, there's there's an incredible scientist. His name is Boyan Slots. He works. Hmm. He created the ocean cleanup. Um, and they're one of the leading um, ocean cleaners in the world. They have some of the wow. most advanced uh, boats and river boats out in rivers and oceans literally right now cleaning up um plastic pollution so and he's 25 years old you know so there's it's it's amazing oh, wow. to see young people stepping up to the challenge um and again you know th this is something that like people i think again forget is that young people are going to be the ones that are facing the consequences of climate change the most drastic mm -hmm. like if we if we think what's happening right now is bad you know with the west coast burning and the South getting hurricanes. And uh, I mean, God knows what else is happening in the world, you know, in, in five to 10 years, this is going to be the new normal, you know, it's going right. to be happening every week, every month, you know, so it's amazing that young people are realizing what's what's at stake. And uh, that's why it's like, you know, something like your app and your organization is a no brainer. And, you know, my 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 job is, you know, to spread information and awareness about how we can help and um this is this is a fantastic way to do it um so thank you again for reaching out and um <laughs> I, I believe we have some exciting news <laughs> yes we do we should uh we should uh we should definitely get to that um yes can i actually ask one question before we go into that just to get yeah, of course because when you're talking about the ocean from my research into climate change the ocean may be the most important uh, mechanism that we have, whether it's to capture carbon, whether it's to, you know, 
it could become terrible where you have an acid, uh, you know, filled uh, ocean and, and things get really bad. So it seems like that's, you know, ground zero, so to speak, for the climate movement. And really, from my research into climate, what happens in the ocean really influences what's happening around the world. Because I mean, not only obviously, the ocean is most of the world, but also the influences um, on weather that it creates are very significant. So what you're doing, uh, working on, you know, clean up and working on bringing attention to the issue, I think, is really the, 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 the critical thing, uh, you know, and, and I hope that more people will get engaged in that. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, that's why I'm so proud of Project Zero. Um, and it, I, I'd, I'd actually like to say that tomorrow I have the, the biggest announcement um, of my um, planet conservation uh, yet. I've teamed up with a company that I, I sort of still can't believe is happening. And I just learned today. Um, so uh, <laughs> tomorrow, I will announce it after my beach cleanup. Um, yeah. And it's sort of like a it's sort of like a pinch me moment, you know, of like, um, it's, it's just it, they, they're just such a massive, important company that um, the fact that they have the confidence of reaching out and, and, and trusting me to, um, to become an ambassador for them is a uh, it's it's insane. So I'm very That's excited to share that talking. tomorrow. Well, um, think about that paired with 100k, which I saw that you got up to, which is really impressive. Yes, and, uh, yes, clearly finally. A engaged followers, because it looks like we have quite a few people that have been joining in. But uh, yeah, well, let's talk about this announcement. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll be happy to, to make that. So Ronan is going to be joining our group of co-chairs at TurnUp, which I'm so excited about, and I know our whole team is. And this is going to be a, a tremendous group of activists, but also, you know, actors, artists, singers, musicians, people who can really speak to how we can engage more communities in the kind of impact that we want to achieve to spread awareness and also to provide advice uh, and support and ideas. And so I'm just so thrilled to announce that you'll be joining us uh, as a, a co-chair at TurnUp. Uh, and so, yeah, no, it's, I, I'm really excited. I'm so honored, man. Um, it's, yeah, it's, when, when you first asked me, I, I almost fell over in my chair, um, in my co-chair. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, again, I, I just wanna thank you um, for what you do and for approaching me. Um, I feel like what you guys are doing uh, are so important and um, in whatever way I can help, uh, you know, I'm, I'm completely um, on board. And, uh, you know, I guess sort of like now it's, it's just another responsibility, you know, it's just another um, company and organization to, uh, you know, promote and, and, and uh, amplify and, um, you know, provide any sort of advice or solutions that I might have or, a company that I work with might have for you guys. Um, I know recently we're teaming up. We're going to put Project Zero on your app. Oh, amazing. Um, wow. So people can access um, ocean conservation with Project Zero. And um, I'm definitely going to be planning on putting tomorrow's company on your app as well. Um, so we'll get, some, we'll get some big hitters on the app. And, um, you know, just slowly start growing the... Um, the program um and i, I know you guys have over ten thousand users right now so we have we have ten thousand people on our list and we have two thousand users from every state so basically okay. ten thousand that our organization reaches um, okay good on the actual app we have two thousand um and actually well, from every state which is well we got we gotta we gotta raise that number we do and we gotta get we gotta get more people involved um also for people that are wondering you know there might be some some sketchy uh, thoughts happening. I, I'm not making a penny off of this. This isn't uh, for an, um, a profit. This isn't for uh, clout. Um, so just wanted to put that out there for whoever wants to get, you know, negative. Um, this is literally just to, yes, yeah, this is literally just to, um, you know, literally turn up activism, turn up whatever you believe in. Um, I put in my hashtags, turn up democracy, turn up sustainability, uh, turn up equality. You know, that's, that's, that's my, um, those are my priorities. Um, I love so, it. so thank and you again, man. 
Thank you. And I'm just going to be putting here in the chat uh, for those that want to check out the app. Uh, you can download yes, please. It from this link here. Um, and, you know, what's amazing is so uh, we're a nonprofit, right? And this is your you're volunteering your support. Everybody has. We actually, you know, none of the people that are involved, you know, are, are not volunteers, which which is really powerful. Right. When you have a group of people who are really 100 percent committed because they believe in, in what in what we're doing. And, you know, exactly. what, it's not even us. I mean, they're us. It's what we are doing. So, you know, you, me, our entire team, you know, other folks involved. So I appreciate that you made that point, because I think a lot of times that people at least, you know, even me naively, when, when we see somebody coming out and supporting a group or an organization, you think, oh, you know, how much money is, is being transacted? Yeah. Or what's, the, what's the gain? And, and it, it's nothing, you know, that's uh, because we're a nonprofit. We're, one of the reasons, actually, you might be interested in, as to why we're nonprofit is really just don't think democracy should be for sale. You know, that's really absolutely not. Like, no, it seems like a simple concept, but yet, you know, no, it's not a it's not a concept that's uh, that's been uh, put into practice in, in many uh, ways. So we're hoping that that's going to be something that people will continue to maybe model off of, create more organizations that are mission driven and, and have, you know, not there to make money. Um, you know, I'm volunteering myself. So it's like, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's where I hope things will go. Obviously, of course, people need to be paid a living wage if they're working and that's so important, but just that we're not making corporate profits. We're not enriching the 1%. Yeah, because, you know, the, the root of the problem happening in the world, you can almost directly stem it to uh, uh, greed. Um, and if, if it wasn't about greed, the world would look a lot different right now. You know, when 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 the when when science shows the the negative effects of these massive polluting corporations mm. and people continue to pour money into it and continue to run them um, instead of, you know, transitioning to green energy, which I sort of want to touch on. And, and this is sort sure. of what I like about this. Is something I like about uh, Biden is that, you know, he always says when when I see the word climate change or climate crisis, I think of jobs. And I think there's this misconception that if we transition to green energy, uh, people are going to be out of jobs. There's not going to be any money to be made for the country. And that is completely false. Please. You know, there's there's so much infrastructure that we could be building. There's so much technology that we could be developing. Um, something simple as, you know, vehicles or, or wind turbines or solar panels. Um, I, have, I have solar panels on my house and, wow. and believe me, it wasn't cheap, but I'd rather spend my money on solar panels than, you know, than, than, than paying the oil companies, you know, or the gas companies. Um, so I think that's a misconception that people forget about green energy. You know, it's, 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 there's a lot of money to be made for the country. Um, so uh, remember that. I, um, I agree with you that that's critical. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. So I think, you know, I think the, the initial steps is sign on to the app. Um, it's it's really user friendly. I tried it out, man. It's it's amazing. It's on my main page on my phone. Oh. Um, as soon as you uh, register, it it asks you what uh, issues you're interested in. It's extremely user friendly. The layout is beautiful, by the way. I wanted to say. Oh, thank you. The colors are really intriguing and 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 um, and soothing, um, and you can literally check off any sort of. Um, of, uh, of activism that you're interested in and passionate about. Um, and it's, it's uh, very easy to use um, and, and really friendly. And uh, yeah, let's, let's get the word out and, and let's, you know, hopefully let's get more big companies um, on the app. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy we're doing this, man. Well, thank you so much for that support. And uh, it means a lot because, you know, we had a lot of people working on it, obviously. And, um, you know, I see one one person asking here in the in the chat, is it available worldwide? And the answer is not yet. Uh, but when we get to that point, you'll be you know involved, obviously, with your background and in, in obviously yeah. many countries and you know, some of your your supporters. So hopefully we'll get there um, soon. But we really want to get it you know really you know strung out and, and and successful in the United States and then move move forward because I think there really is a possibility. Um, but you know let's get two thousand to twenty thousand to two hundred thousand and you know, keep moving up because, you know, it's like an exponential growth, right? So the more people that join, the more valuable it is to people, the more 
people that will join. So it, you know, and the more activism, it's all about impact, of course, in the end. So exactly. But yeah, just to clarify one thing I said earlier. I mean, obviously, I'm volunteering, and that's I, I, you know, I have a position of privilege to be able to do that. Not everybody could spend time, you know, and and do that. So um, there's that to to the fact that everybody's volunteering um, as well. Um, so just something to think about when you're thinking about. You know, privilege and starting a, a group and 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 time because time is is money and it's so important that um, you know it is. economic justice and and is is just critical and it goes right in with climate where you know I even think that the green jobs economy can create more jobs than we have now and create uh, more better jobs that aren't you know dangerous and aren't uh, polluting and 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 causing uh, you know cancer and 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 um, and, and strong safety precautions and protocols and the United States could become a leader in, in green jobs. And that's why, you know, another reason the election and getting active is so critical. Well, that's the plan, you know, th that's, that's Mr. Biden's plan, man, is to be the leader in all of this. You know, it's, it's, it's about damn time. You know, it's, it's, we can't, we can't keep falling short to countries that are an eighth of our size, you know, like we're, we're so far behind when it comes to, you know, leading the world in climate. Um, it's, you, there's countries like, you know, Switzerland and, and, and Iceland that are crushing it, but they don't have 300 plus million people living there. You know what I mean? So can you imagine if we were able to expand that across America? Um, it would be unbelievable. It would be absolutely unbelievable. And everybody has power, which I think is something that you're talking about when we're saying our democracy uh, we need to turn that up because your vote is a power, you know, actions that you can take with our app is power. Purchasing is power, as you were talking about. And um, and really, I mean, really, everybody can make a difference that, you know, you can be, you know, five years old, you can be 100 years old, the, anyone can actually get involved and and make change um, because, you know, it, it, it it's it's now possible, especially with technology. Exactly. You know, we we we're so lucky to have the technology that we have right now um, and the, you know, and the ability to connect with people from the furthest part of the world. You know, um, there's people tuning in from Australia, you know, wow. it's literally on the other, it's literally on the other side of the planet. So it's, um, it shows that we can really, um, we can really be all hands on deck right now. And, and it's, it's something I've been preaching forever, man, is we need, we need to be hands on deck right now more than ever. Um, because I don't think we can withstand four more years of this administration. Um, and I think people are finally realizing that. And I think people are fed up and, you know, I'm, I'm extremely hopeful that we're going to see record number voting and, and we saw record number voting in 2018. That's right. That's why the house looks the way it does. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to happen again and I think it's going to be the most epic election ever. Um, and you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of new resources, you know, like one of the biggest things is I love sports. I'm about to turn on the Lakers game and the NBA oh, yeah. is, is dedicating most of their stadiums to, um, to voting, which is That's unbelievable. Great. And it's That's never great. been done before, you know, and it's, and it's expanding to baseball and I'm sure football is going to, um, is going to, is going to join as well. So it's, we have the resources. Now we just have to get out and vote and um and fight voter suppression you know and and i think a lot of people are, are are willing to do that now and it's and it's beautiful it's beautiful to watch that is so true and fighting voter suppression because we have to make sure that people are voting early and uh and that their you know their rights aren't being infringed upon by those that don't want to create historic turnout and one of the things that i always like to talk about is what you're saying which is in this election people 29 and under can decide the election and create absolutely historic turnout. There was an article today or yesterday in Forbes uh, online talking about how we, according to a poll from the Harvard Youth Poll, which is a well-reputed uh, polling uh, center, we might see uh, record levels surpassing 2008, which was, of course, Obama's first uh, election. That's right, baby. Amazing turnout. So I'm so hopeful that we can see 50, 60 maybe 65%, uh, 70%. I mean, obviously we want 100, but realistically that would just be an incredible increase from what we've, you know, what we've ever seen in, in, the, in the past, in recent history. Yeah, I mean, I said earlier, you know, in 2016, over 100 million people didn't vote. I, I, 
I truly doubt we won't see that kind of number again. That yeah. that just doesn't that just doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Um, you could sort of feel the vibe of the country right now, um, and and we have we have an opportunity, a very very solid opportunity to um, to get someone that cares in the office and someone that will listen. Most importantly, you know, you can obviously see that he's listening and is influenced by really good people. You know, whether it's AOC or Bernie, he's he's right. listening. Um, and, uh, it's, ugh, man, <sighs> the champagne will be flowing that night if that happens. So, um, yeah, I, I think I, I feel really good about it and, and I feel good about, you know, the, the strides that young people are taking and, and, and middle-aged people are taking and, and even old people, man, old people yeah. are fed up too, man. They, they've seen, they've seen some crazy stuff in this country. So. You know, older people, I think, are ready for change as well, but like actual, actual change. Um, so it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's a really crucial time, and I, th is. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get them done. And I think there are just a couple things that people can do right now. You know, you can download Turn Up. You can actually register to vote from Turn Up. Uh, we ask you if you're registered right when you join. You can, most importantly, get your friends out to vote because yes. that really makes a significant difference. And I think. Uh, from a poll at the Tisch College, I think more than 50% of young people have actually tried to get their friends to register and to vote already. So we can, you know, increase that. We can, uh, you know, actually take action, you know, volunteer, uh, whether that's, you know, on a campaign, on a nonprofit, anything that could actually help get out the vote and create that historic turnout. So it's not even just voting, it's actually getting others to vote, registering to vote. And even if you're too young to vote, uh, like I was for obviously, I mean, everybody was too young to vote for the same amount of time, but actively for a while, getting other people to vote uh, and encouraging them. Exactly. To vote. Exactly. So exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, and, and, and if you're if you're obviously if your kids can't vote, then then teach them about the importance of voting, you know, so then so then when they do become 18, they that they'll be prepared, you know, and it's it's a it's a beautiful time right now to educate and, and to listen and to inform and and then most importantly, to take action. Um, so I'm really excited about this journey that we're going to embark on. And I'm excited about the journey that America is about to embark on. And uh, just thank you again, man. Well, thank you. We're really looking forward to working together, to collaborating, to getting your advice and ideas into the work we're doing and bringing on you know, people that, that you're uh, familiar with that may be able to spread the word and to organize. And just thank you again for for joining us, for doing this. We're excited that you're one of our co-chairs uh, and that uh, we'll be working together, I think, hopefully for, for quite a while on, yes. on this uh, project, really to increase turnout, increase activism, and make it easy for everybody to get involved. Yeah, we, we, got, we got a lot of work to do and we got a long road ahead. Um, uh, you know, uh, so we're, we're going we're gonna to start right now and, and um, we're, we're not going to slow down. That's right. And it's just amazing. It, to see all these people from around the world. And uh, one person was interested, I don't know if you wanna look at the comments or the questions, but somebody is interested. When uh, was the first election that you voted in and what was it like? Cause I think this is, as you said, 17 million or something people have turned 18. So they may be inspired yeah. to hear what, what it was like for you. Uh, so, so I couldn't vote in 2008, unfortunately, but I voted in 2016. Um, so we went, we went blue, but it wasn't enough. Um, but you know, we, we have a, we have an opportunity to change that. Um, so, and you know, I obviously saw how crucial it was, um, that people didn't vote in 2016 and how it could have changed everything. Um, but you know, we sort of have a, a second chance, um, That's to change right. that. So, um, you know. We'll make it happen. I, I really think I really think we will. I hope so. And uh, and that's what it's all about. And we think we have what, like 40 days or so or less, uh, maybe a little yes. more until the election. Yes. So, yes. Tomorrow is the climate strike. So we hope everybody gets out, uh, to the virtual climate strike. I think they might see more people on that than in person because anybody can join from there. Uh, exactly. Know, yeah. And, you know, it's it's climate week now. So this is a really beautiful way to sort of, you know, involve everything and, and, and talk about everything. And, um, you know, please turn up tomorrow. Um, 
That's no correct. pun intended. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, and I'm really excited to 